In Destiny, it is so important to know the difference between resistance mods that you can resist up to 4 times more damage than usual. Hi everyone, I am Alex and welcome to a new Destiny 2 video. Today I'm gonna explain in detail how resistance mods work on PvE so that you can resist much more damage than you'd normally do. These are three things that can make a huge difference between the damage you resist and I think you more or less aware about at least one of them. Which is your level, since each level of power will allow you to do more damage and also receive less damage from the enemy. The other obvious one is the resilience stat, which is much less important than you'll think, because every 10 points it will give you just over 1%. So the difference between carry 30 and 100 resilience is only 10%. That's why resist mods are so important, which can totally increase your resistance with 100% if correctly combined. However, the game doesn't explain in detail these mods, how exactly they work, how much percentage of damage you resist, or if you can stack them. Well, that's why I'm here, because knowing these things will literally make the difference between dying or living in tons of situations during the game. Except for special seasonal mods that we will talk later about them, all resist mods are equipped on the chest right into those two slots in the middle. And there are three types of base resist mods that you can equip in any chest. These are the sniper resistance, melee resistance and concussive dumper. Let's start with this one, concussive dampener. This mod says it reduces the area of effect damage by combatants. If you are wondering what kind of damage these are, this can be any type of attacks that are not direct shots or melees, but grenades, bashes, stomps, nice flames, possessed orbs, the wizard smokes, boomer shots, explosive enemies, and any other attack that have AoE. The damage that you resist when carrying one of these mods is 25%. However, you can stack it up by equipping two of them, giving you 40%. And yes, I know what you're thinking. But the damage reduction is stacks differently than buffs. That's why it's not 50% or more. So now you know exactly what it does and let's jump to the next one. Sniper resistance. Generally, everyone thinks that this works against enemy snipers and that's it. But if you read carefully what it says, it gives the resistance against any combatant at long distance. This means that first, not only it does work against any kind of enemy, but on top of that, it will not work against the snipers themselves if you are close to them. Let me explain. This mod, what it really does is give you resistance against direct shots from an enemy that is far from you. I really emphasize on direct shots because AoE damage from far enemies does not work. However, the game does not explain you how far you must be from the enemy to receive the extra resistance. So I had to check it out for myself using Darcy to measure the distance from the enemy and to be able to figure out when it started to work. The conclusion was that from about 28 or 29 meters is when I started to get the extra resistance. In addition, the enemy that you see shooting is not a sniper. So that confirms that it does not work only against sniper enemies. So the next time you are in a Grandmaster Nightfall and you are killed by a sniper by just one shot despite wearing this mod, now you will know why you die exactly. And if you wonder about the damage resistance, it is 25% with one mod and 40% with two. Exactly the same as the previous one. And you should be getting used to these numbers when it comes to chest mods. Finally, about the base mods, we have to talk about the resistance against melee. The same thing happens to this mod as with the snipers, and the name may indicate that it works only against melee attacks, but if you read it carefully, it indicates that it gives you extra resistance against point blank damage, which means very close range damage. So it does not only work against melee, but any type of damage while you are very close to the enemy. This distance is exactly 4 meters by what I could see while BD shot at with a shotgun. And the damage resistance is 25% with one mod and 40% with two. No surprises here. Having talked about the basic mods that you can equip on the chest, it's time to talk about the elemental mods that you can also equip on the same piece. However, these elemental mods will depend on the element of your armor, which means if you want resistance against solar damage, you must wear a solar armor. If you want resistance against arc, you must wear an arc armor. And so on. Simple to understand, right? All in the same bag and treat them as elemental resist mods. To begin with, all these mods will give you 24% if you carry one or 40% if you carry two. The same as always on the chest piece. 
And in case you didn't know, enemies also use weapons or damage from different elements. And it is usually easy to see if you look at their projectile or bullets. Their colors will show you what element they are using against you. And by the way, not all enemies of the same faction use the same element. For example, the Hive enemies can have three elements, depending on the enemy and the type of attack. With this, I don't want to scare you so you never equip an elemental mod because the enemies can shoot you with everything they have, but I just want to make you aware that you cannot equip mods to avoid all kind of damage from the same faction. That said, I do recommend you to equip elemental mods to avoid all kind of damage no matter the distance, range or type of attacks, especially if it is the most used element by a faction. For example, against Fallen, I highly recommend the Arc Resist because the bullets, ships, grenades, snipers and even some melee attacks are almost all arc damage. That's why I use double arc resistance in some parts of the new dungeon when doing the solo flawless. Although, there are some enemies with different attacks like the solo shotgun or the void servitors. Against Hive, for example, things can get a little tricky. If your biggest problem are wizards and knights with arc damage, maybe you should use arc resistance for this. However, if your problem are acolytes, ogres and shriekers, you should use void resistance. Also, do not forget to check the modifiers in activities to know exactly what is the elemental damage that will hurt you the most during the activity, so you can try to use the mods against it. Sadly, due to the limitations of the armor, we will not be able to equip ourselves with an arc and a void mod at the same time, so then you have to combine with the previous base mods that we have mentioned to avoid the extra type of damage that you may get. Now that you know all about the chest resist mods, I'm going to mention you something interesting about how to combine them. You already know very well that all modifiers give you 25% resistance and if you accumulate them too, you get... Come on, say it. Yes, exactly, 69. Wait, no, what? <laughs> no, it's 40%. Come on guys, focus up. What I'm explaining to you is that, for example, when combining resist mods against melee and concussive dampener, if you get attacked by a stomp from a big guy or an enemy that self explodes, you'll get 42% instead of the classic 40%. However, this only applies to the same attack that both mods have effect on, such also as carrying a resist mod against the snipers and another one against arc. So if a Fallen Sniper shoots you and you are in a good distance, you'll have 42% resistance thanks to both mods. But I want you to take this as an extra data in case you want to optimize your resistance even more, but I personally do not usually take it very much into account and I prefer to have 40% against almost all the damage from the Fallen before having only extra 2% for X type of enemy or damage. Those are all the chest mods but we are not done here yet. There are some unique equipment and mods that can give you extra resistance. For example, there are some class exotics like the Hunter's Chest called Omnioculus that can give you 100% extra resistance when in Vs. And I do not want to invest too much time on exotics, but one of the most important that you should use, and you can use in any characters since it is a weapon, is Risk Runner. A weapon that allows you to resist 50% of all arc damage. And the perk is activated with any arc damage that you received, even if it is not from an enemy. For example, the resist mods are only activated if it's from an enemy damage, not counting environment damage, as you can see right here. In fact, that's why Risk Runner perk can also be activated by throwing your own arc nade at your feet. As for the seasonal special mods, I will mention some of them very briefly. Protective Light is 50% when you get into red health, but you can keep the resistance even if you get back to your shields. Striking Light is 25% when running. War Mind Protection is 50% from affected enemies. Well of Tenacity is 10% but it can stack. Passive Guard is 100% when wielding a sword. Overload Disruption is 42% damage resistance from the affected enemy. And to summarize, all the chess mods, whether elemental or basic, are all of them 25% with one mod equipped and 40% with two. All these mods listed here can be stacked with each other, but they can't stack with copies of the same except for the chess mods and well of tenacity. I didn't want to complicate things even more with activity specific mods like the ones that only work in raids or nightmares, for example the taken resist mod in the last wish raid, which by the way is 20%. 
So I hope that was enough information to learn. If you like this kind of video and info, please leave it a like. And don't forget to check out my video with the best settings for Destiny on PC and console. It has a lot of details that will help you a lot to improve your performance and also your gameplay. And if you want to be aware of more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and activate the bell so you don't miss anything. So I hope you enjoyed the video and see you later.